What's up, guys? I figure I hop on here really quick um, just to let you guys know that um, I will be returning to campus as of September 9th. Um, but what I am going to do is that I'm going to over up until that point, I'm going to figure out how to manage the class because it's a lot of y'all. <laughs> so I don't know how comfortable we'll be sitting with a class of 38 bodies in there. So, um, but if not, worst case scenario, we'll just make it work and we'll do what we'll do. All right. So I have posted one of your first study notes. It only just cap chap uh, covers chapters one and two only. Uh, chapter three will uh, be separate. And then I'll post some additional learning material for you uh, later on this week for chapter three. So um, definitely go into your ebook through Brightwave um, and you're going to cover uh, Well, we are covering, like I said, uh, chapters one and two as far as um, as far as the book is concerned. Um, definitely read all points. Um, definitely. Maybe you have flashcards. Definitely go ahead and get your flashcards and start remembering this stuff because kinesiology is complex. But it doesn't have to be, okay? It does not have to be. We could just breeze right through it and then we just memorize everything. However, do not be ashamed if there's some things about this content that you will not remember, okay? I didn't start getting comfortable with kinesiology until after I finished my master's degree, and this was almost 10 years ago. So uh, definitely just pace yourself and be comfortable with it. But I just want to let you know that this content will move fast um, as we start out with the overview of what kinesiology is at the very top. Okay, and as you scroll through your ebook, you're going to notice the different anatomical positions or the fundamental position. All right, there are two different concepts that just based on the hand positioning. All right, and you're going to scroll on down and move my camera where it talks about uh, the different positions that you'll have. I guess my camera don't want to move, um, but the different positions on this page um, as far as anatomical or fundamental positioning. All right, so now you're going to move over to reference lines. Not going to go too deep into that, um, but this is very important content you need to know, especially when we're talking about direction. Um, also, we talk about uh, the different anatomical uh, directions when we're talking about medially and laterally. Um, you know, you never want to forget that your lateral is towards the outside and the medial is always towards the midline. That's how I always remember it. Medial, lateral. Easy, right? Okay, so also we're talking about uh, definitely... Uh, still referencing uh, alignment and positioning, where it just talks about the uh, alignment or kind of like the angle alignment, that terminology you will need to know. All right, planes of motion. We know that there are three, sagittal, transverse, and frontal. Um, and you definitely need to know these. Maybe you've already learned these in anatomy, um, but if not, or if you learn these in sports injury with me, you're gonna relearn them again, all right? So now we're talking about the, still talking about the planes of motion. I said I'm moving fast so I could get through this. Um, and we're talking about body regions um, where it talks, where it uses certain terminology to identify that part of the body. All right, so definitely get your flashcards out and remember this. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you get your flashcards out and remember this because you will come across this stuff again in strength and conditioning with me. So please get to know it now, okay? Um, <clears throat> now we'll talk about your skeletal system. Uh, this is very important as we will test for this, uh, just knowing the different parts of the skeleton. Um, I will provide worksheets on a separate template um, just for you to get comfortable with the bony parts or what bone is it? And you'll need to know this as we learn the muscles, the origin and insertion. Okay, as well as the innervation. Very important. All right. <clears throat> so osteology uh, is the adult skeleton consisting of approximately 206 bones. I can tell you that's a test. So definitely get to know that. Um, it just kind of covers all aspects of the bones. We talk about the skeletal function. Definitely remember that. Um, types of bones. Okay, you'll need to know that. Uh, and it's ideal for you to know that in terms of, uh, of muscular, muscular articulation and movement. So definitely get to know about the type of bones that are available to you. All right. We won't go too deep into uh, topical bony features. Um, that's a little bit of, of physiology and, that, and anatomy. Um, but, you know, anatomy does overlap with kinesiology. So, um, yes, do review it. I did not include it in a study uh, as far as part of the study. Uh, homework, but you will need to know this for a test. So, excuse me. 
Um, let me see. Um, we're talking about bone development and growth. Okay, children have an epiphyseal plate, all right? And it's an indicator that bones are still growing. That's how you know that you have a hand or a body of a child, all right? You have different types of joints. You have joints that are completely fixed, that they're immovable. Then you have joints that move very freely. Definitely get to know those. Um, like I said, if you have me for this class, you have me for sports injury, it will be repeating myself. So, so sorry in advance. All right, so you do have, where we do talk about range of motion, okay? Range of motion is often measured with an instrument known as a goinometer, okay? Uh, so it's a unique object. I don't have one in my office, at least I don't think, but I think Dr. Washington does. And we'll, once I return to campus, uh, we'll review what that particular object is. Like I said, I'm not going to stay concentrated too much on chapter one. Just make sure that you are very familiar with these terms. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to chapter two. <clears throat> Where chapter two talks about the function of, uh, I can scroll down to, it's a lot in chapter one. All right, where it talks about a little bit of the uh, neuromuscular fundamentals of muscle, okay? Meaning we're covering motion, we're covering direction, we're covering a little bit of levers, and we're talking about innervation, right? Innervation is basically um, the nerve responsible for the stimulus response to that muscle, all right? So um, like I said, I'm not gonna go too deep into this. Um, make sure that you review muscular nomenclature, uh, which basically, you know, as you're learning different skeletal muscles, um, it's important for you to know how they're named, what they're named, why they're named this, uh, location, action, points, uh, points of attachment, shape, size, uh, those type of things are important for you to know as far as why muscles are often um, named what they are. So, uh, for example, you have orbicularis oculi, uh, which obviously we you know with the root word being um, an orbit, okay, and oculi being, you know, referencing the eye. So it's just things that you should just, um, just be mindful of to remember as far as uh, muscular nomenclature. Um, so talk about shape of the muscle and fiber arrangement. That's important as well. Uh, muscle tissue properties, there are four, <clears throat> okay? So irritability and excitability are the same thing roughly. So, uh, you know, you definitely want to analyze and get to know these muscle tissue properties, okay? Uh, then you have your muscle terminology. Like I said, I'm moving fast because I don't want to hang out here and you guys probably have a bandwidth of maybe 10 minutes of watching the video. All right. So we'll talk about the roles of the muscles a little bit. Um, and that is pretty, from what I'm thinking about off the top of my head, as far as muscles are concerned, I think that is it. So uh, definitely go into Blackboard, complete your homework assignment. All right. And watch Blackboard weekly. Um, as well as going into your Remind app um, for any additional information that is needed. Your first test is in September, okay? Uh, it is shortly after the due date of the completion of your Learning Module 1 homework. If I were you, I would just go ahead and get it done now and start reading chapters 1 through 3. And I mean, like, not only just read, but take notes. Take notes, take notes, take good notes, okay? Um, I usually... When, back in the day when I was doing it, I used to just have a notebook with me and I would just kind of write everything out because for me, writing things out helps me to remember. So, and then uh, there will be an opportunity for you to go over the skeleton that we have on campus, um, as well as when I do return on campus, there will be a coloring book that is ideal for you. All right. So like I said, I'm going to end it here because I know you guys bandwidth is real short for these videos. So uh, make sure you do your syllabus quiz. Make sure you take your pre-test. OK, your pre-test is due on the 12th. Your syllabus quiz is due on the 5th. All right. So I will not take any late syllabus. And um, if it's not done by the 5th, I will report that as you being non-attending. And I'll report that to the university. So got a job to do. So make sure you do your syllabus. Make sure you do your pretest. All right. If any questions, let me know. Peace.